Hello friends, good morning. Hope you're doing great. Today we'll be discussing the LT RRM or the Radio Resource Management, which is a very important uh, topic. And I'm going to explain uh, the functions of the Radio Resource Management in LT. At the end of the session, I'll be explaining the RRM differences between the LT technology and the UMTS technology. What is the basic uh, difference in RRM in terms of the functionality in 3G and 4G or the LT and the UMTS system. So to start with RRM, we will understand uh, the definition of RRM and uh, the responsibility of uh, the RRM and uh, how does RRM works along with the important functions which is handled by the radio source management entity and uh, will be also seeing some of the lower layer functions L1 and L2 layers which affects uh, the layer 3 of RRM to make decision in terms of uh, you know modifying the behavior of the system or the LT system so let's start with uh, uh, the radio resource management uh, RRM is basically responsible uh, for the administration of the available radio resources in the node B or in the network and enables the provisioning of high quality services without compromising the network quality as well as the performance and uh, the capacity of the network. So that is the basic understanding of RRM as an entity. So the radio resource management here I have uh, noted for you it's the, it's, it's the responsible for the administration of the available radio resources and enables the provisioning of high quality services without compromising the network capacity and the performance or the quality. So that's all about the RRM to start with. And now let's move forward for the RRM functions or the radio resource management functions uh, for layer 3 and above. So the first function which I have written here is the uh, radio bearer controls uh, so which is nothing but RBC radio bearer control which is uh, the number one or the most important function of the radio resource management in LT network so it controls the radio bearer uh, in the NOB as well as in the network the radio admission control Okay, admission of uh, uh, you know the uh, new UVs into the network, or you know, admission of any new user into the network, as I told, without compromising the current capacity and the performance of the network. Third function is uh, the connection and mobility control, or the CMC. C stands for connection, M for mobility, and C for again control so connection and mobility control so all kind of connection controls and the mobility or the handovers whether it is intersystem interact intrafrequency interfrequency you know all the mobility and the connection related uh, you know queries and things uh, is handled here by cmc or the connection and mobility control management which is the third important function of the radio resource management when we are having DRA or the dynamic resource allocation which is the fourth important function of the RRM uh, which allocates the resource dynamically as for some preset algorithms so that's all uh, we can uh, for the timing understand the dyna dynamic resource allocation which is controlled by the RRM in layer 3 and above so the dynamic resource allocation is a very important when we are having uh, resource allocations whenever required by the users and which is again controlled by the administration capability of the RLM and the next one is uh, we call ICR control or the intercell interference radio resource management and the load management so how to manage the load when we are having excessive load in the network how to control the admission of the users and how to ensure smooth operation and smooth execution of the current demand of the users keeping in eye 
the network capacity and the performance or the quality. So that is again another important function or the fifth function, uh, you know, which is uh, nothing but ICR. So here we control intercell interference and the load management. Moving the next one is RC or the resource configuration. Configuring the resources. Okay, this is this is the sixth important function of the RRM. And the last one is the interact RRM or IRR, which is nothing but uh, you know uh, the seventh or the last important function, which is really important in terms of uh, resource management. So uh, everything related to uh, radio, uh, you know, inter radio access technology like two uh, Z, three Z, or CDMA, you know. So anything related to interact uh, that is controlled by this function of the RRM, which is nothing but the IR, let's say any kind of reselection or any kind of handovers or any other related functions uh, with respect to radio, other radio access technology, the inter radio access technology is handled by IRR or the interact radio resource management. So these are the all the seven important RRM functions for layer 3 and layer 4. Uh, the RRM uses the layer 1 and layer 2 functions also to modify the system behavior uh, as per uh, requirement or as, uh, as and when we need to maintain the network capacity and the performance. So some of this important function I have denoted here which is uh, you know L1 and, and L2 level function but which is uh, you know required to modify the system behavior which is again controlled by the RRM so first one is the uplink downlink power control which is very important and crucial in LT second one is the congestion control and uh, network congestion or resource congestion anything related to congestion the third entity is the DTX or DRX control control the fourth point is link adaptation which is nothing but the adaptive modulation and coding link quality control it's a quality control of every radio link hard control or the hybrid uh, automatic repeat request which you already know and we have covered in other sessions and the last one is the MIMO and the aerial control or anything related to the antenna system so these are again the seven important L1, L2 uh, functions, you know, uh, which, you know, is used by the higher layers or, you know, the RRM uses this lower layer function to modify the behavior of the system to have a, a complete balanced system or you can say what we are aiming here, like uh, uh, to providing high quality services without compromising the, the network capacity and the performance or the quality of the network. So to control these things in RRM, we need to have these functions also reviewed and uh, uh, which is again uh, used to change the behavior in the higher layer. So these are also important, up and down in power control, congestion control, DTX, DRX control, link adaptation, uh, link quality, hard control, MIMO control and aerial control. So that's all about the radio resource management. Now I would uh, like to tell you the main difference between RRM of uh, LT and the UMTS. Uh, so friends, uh, the next thing is uh, the difference between LT and UMTS uh, RRM or the radio resource management differences between uh, the 4G and the 3G network. So I have four important points which I have uh, written here. Point number one is uh, the decentralized and centralized RRM in LT it is decentralized or it has gone to the A's to the E node B label so the RRM uh, function purely resides at the E node B but in case of UMTS it is centralized which is operated from RMC most of the uh, RRM functions resides at RMC so the main control is centralized control which resides in RMC wherein in LT or the 4G, it is handled by the ACE, 
network element or the inode B. So the inode B has most of the functions and the control of the RM in case of 4G or the LTE system. The point number two is soft software handover which is not supported in LTE system. Or in case of 3G system, we have this soft software handover. In LTE it is not supported. The third point is the power control which is less stringent in LTE system due to OFDMF which is a different uh, interface or the you know radio interface uh, technology but in case of 3G or the UMTS first power control is adapted to address basically the near far uh, problem and uh, the inter rat uh, uh, technology also so first power control is adapted in uh, UMTS or 3G technology where in LT we are having uh, this uh, uh, power control less stringent last important difference is uh, the LT or the uh, 4G system it's much more stringent in terms of timing synchronization due to the OFDMA uh, you know technology or for OFDMA signals and number one is uh, uh, decentralized RM control in LT, centralized RM control in RMC in 3Z or UMTS. Soft software handover is not supported in LT, which is supported in 3Z. Power control less stringent due to OFDMA, but uh, first power control is adapted in 3Z due to addressing the near fire effect. Last point is uh, you know timing synchronization is much more stringent comparing to 3Z technology in LT system. For wave DMS signals in UMTS, you know, this is, uh, you know, not very stringent, the timing synchronization. So that's all about uh, the RM of LT and the basic differences between the 3Z and the 4G or the LT and the UMTS RM procedures and a complete understanding of the RM in both the technology. That's all for today. I hope you really enjoyed the session and uh, don't forget to hit like below this video and do subscribe to our channel for more updates on LT technology and other technology also. We'll be coming up next with some more important topics for you. Uh, don't hesitate to share the video and uh, do keep in touch with us for more updates. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.